championship football and they succeeded. Mm. Um, let's move on to the next topic. I mean, you look at these games since the turn of the year. Burnley at home in the FA Cup, 1-0. Had to rely on a Pedro Porro absolute wonder goal in that game in the last stages. Two all against Man United. Yeah, we scored two goals, but didn't create bucket loads of chances that game. And then against Man City, where we created little next to nothing. I mean... Is this purely a consequence, Ash, of just how much we miss Young Min Son and Pape Matasar or just Young Min Son? I think, yes, both Son and Saar are crucial in, in the way we play. In terms of Pape Saar, we saw how important he was when Basuma came back and he wasn't quite looking quite the same. And then when Saar came back, all of a sudden, da da, do you know what I mean? Everything starts to look like we're, we're, we're slowly moving in the right direction. I think, in terms of just in Saran in particular, the way he like defends, he covers Poro. Poro is not going to be screaming at Johnston as much if Saar's there because he's able to cover the ground a lot more. I think he's a lot more press resistant. So when Man City are pressing you like that, when Manchester United are trying to press you into a corner or Burnley are doing what they do, you've got a guy that's able to take that pressure and carry up the field. So sometimes he can pass, sometimes... He can a thread a ball through, but sometimes he can actually help the attacking third by just taking pressure off one or two players. So, and I think that's what you get from a sauce. Never complains, always hard working. But for me, the most important attribute of a player like that is his bravery. Where like a Hoiberg and possibly a skip as well, they might take one or two seconds to dwell on something. And in this style of football, the way we play so quickly. You can't think for more than a second. You need to be instinctive. And that's what you get with Papamata Saar. Now, with Son, you get the experience. You get the total package. You get someone that's clinical in front of goal. You get a leader in, uh, in Son as well when he talks to his teammates. He does it in a different way. He's not like your, your Roy Keynes or, you know, because everyone's like really, in my opinion, critical on Son and being a captain. Like, he's not shouting, he needs to be pulling their shirt, blah, blah, blah. I don't see him as that. But he leads in his own way. I've heard, I think it was, was it Poro or Johnson? I can't remember. One of the players said that, you know, Son, like, when he comes into pit, like, into the room, everyone, like, listens to what he says because he's actually an important figure. And so that tells me that the dressing room have got his respect. So when you've got a player like that leading the line, Telling players what to do, do you know what I'm saying? And like earlier, the start of the season, just getting them in front of the fans, making that little huddle, having their little team talk, that's what you're going to get from Son. Do you know what I mean? And as I said before, there was been times when Kane was injured. Yeah, Kane was injured out of the team and Son was the man that stepped up. And again, this season, you're seeing Son step up. And a lot of people look at Sonny and think, ah, you know, Nice guy, always smiling, blah, blah, blah. But brother, when you see his dad, everyone was calling him world-class. <laughs> Abby, he ain't no world-class, brother. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't really, don't get twisted. Son is a bad boy, you know. Because I know his father made him do kick-ups. I think I was watching a documentary for like two to three hours or four hours, he was saying. Yeah. I know so must have been 20 crying. hours of kick-ups. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, the dad probably made him into a man. I, I guarantee you. I guarantee it, man. And I think underneath all those smiles, you're seeing a cold killer. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's the reason why he's so... And that's what we're missing. We're missing someone that had... I remember that goal he scored against Burnley, like that hat trick, that was sensational. I know it was such a long time ago, but his movement, like sometimes he, he felt like a false nine. Sometimes he felt like he was leading the line. He knew when to run as well. Um, he knows how to break. And then what kills it? He was doing well in a nine position. We moved him to the left and he still delivered. How about that? He still delivered. Because I have, even I was like, oh, Son's not really a left winger anymore. Like, he's not really a winger anymore. <laughs> he just kept everyone quiet. Do you understand? He's the boss. So, yes, we are missing a, a, a quality player uh, as, as, as Son is. And we are missing um, Saar's legs and his... Um, tenacity and his um ability just to kind of just not think overthink things just you know be do things off the cuff so yeah i think if we had those two players like moving forward against like you know man united the burnley's the cities i think we do a better job personally um they're really important to how we play 
And when you're looking for leaders, those two guys, they turn up, man. And I really like those two players, man, as you can tell. Yeah, I mean, I think it was evident to see, especially in that Newcastle game when Pape Matasar came back, how much we actually missed him, um, how pivotal he is to this team. And we always do look, in my opinion, a bit disjointed. Never mind Son when Pape Sar doesn't play. But for you, David, how much are we missing them and how pivotal are they to the team, both of them? Absolutely huge. I think you look at Papa Matasar's stats this season, I think he's missed, what, five games? And we haven't won in all five games. So that probably alludes to how important he is in terms of defensively and forward, linking absolutely everybody together. Um, and it's just the work rate of the kid, how humble he is. You know, there's no ego about him. He just goes mm. out there, does what needs to be done. He never looks and goes, no, nah, I'm too good for that, which a lot of players have done at Tottenham in the past few years. So we absolutely miss him in that regard. And um Look, when it comes to Sun, I remember having um, a debate on here a few weeks ago about why he should be moved out to the left-hand side. And I always maintained it's because of the creativity. You know, he's he's that guy that we look to far too often to be able to get on the ball and go make some, something happen. You even go back to that Nottingham Forest game, nothing was happening until he started getting on the ball, driving that player, swinging balls into the box. He's the catalyst going forward. He's the only player in that front line that can actually create as well as finish. Um, and look, it, also to uh, sort of allude how important he is, Postacoglu wouldn't have played him through injury in the early part of the season if he wasn't important to this team um, in terms of creativity and also finishing, especially in the big games. But look, for me, I think the wider point should be is, you know, Tottenham need to do more in the in the forward area, in the, in, in the transfer market. We shouldn't be so reliant on one player to be able to provide the goals and the assists I spoke about um, the last time we were on about the Timo Werner deal. I said, financially, no risk at all. But in terms of um, ambition-wise, it'll come back to cost us. FA Cup is already gone. Man United, he had a couple of good chances as well, didn't take them. So I, I feel like my my sort of concerns around the Timo Werner um, signing are starting to come true. For me, it's it's Tottenham just need to realise you can't just rely on one man to do the business. You have to have a plethora of forwards. You look at Man City stock right throughout. You look at Liverpool stock right throughout and on the bench. Same with Man City. They're the teams you want to overcome. You can't be reliant on one player over the whole season. You have to have three or four players that you can rely on that can step up. If one's having an off day, the other one steps in and does it. So for me, yeah, we miss we, we, we miss Papa, Sar, Papa Matt Sar. Yes, we miss Son. But we should not be in this position where we were reliant on one attacking player when we've had um, one of the best attack attack lines in the Premier League over the last decade. And I argue now we've won the worst attack lines, um, you know, in, in the Premier League right now, and one of our worst attack lines in well over a decade. And the only way of sorting it out is money. We can't be taking punts on players anymore, sort of, especially in that area. Um, will they come good? Will they not? The whole Werner sign, and when everyone was like, if he comes good, and everyone was like, if he doesn't come good, for me, if say ifs don't watch it anymore, you have to bring in the right players for the with the right quality for that area. Scoring goals and creating goals is the hardest thing to do in football. It's been the saying around the game for so long. Why are we ignoring it? You have to have the right players with the right mentality and the right. I, I, and the big game mentality also, the, the elite mentality that want to do it week in, week out. We've got players right now who they shy away from the big occasion. Werner shied away the other night. Johnson shied away the other night. The goal got tough and they didn't want to know. We can't have players like that. We have to get back to having one of the best forward lines in the Premier League. We have to. We can't just be reliant on one attacker. It always used to be the same with Harry Kane. But what people didn't want to mention, when we didn't have Harry Kane, we had Son. We had one or the other. And when we had both, we were absolutely lethal. Now we've got one. He ain't there. We can't create chances. It's it, it's a problem. I'd argue it's been a problem all season. Um, I sort of highlighted it way back in preseason. The wing situation for me just hasn't looked right all season. You go back all season as well. We haven't created a lot of clear-cut chances this season. Nowhere near it. We created more clear-cut chances under Conte and Jose Mourinho than what we are so far this season. It's just we have been clinical with what we've took. But we need to create more and we need to take more if we want to become that deadly force. Sim, you agree? Um, I don't agree that we have one of the worst front lines in the league. I, th I think that's that's what was said in that statement. But I do agree that um, Son is being missed, for sure. And I do agree with David that 
we're, I don't even think it's necessarily his clinical edge that we're missing because uh, we know he's the most the best finisher in the league. We know how clinical he can be. But what Son has really done this season, which is, is he's made his game all round. He's really stepped up in the creative department um, this season. His all round game's been really really strong. I think when it comes to chances created, he's actually near the top of the league. Uh, when it comes to um, uh, through balls, I think accurate through balls. I think he's first for 80% of his through balls to be accurate. Um, maybe that's because he doesn't have that many, but um, still, when he does attempt a through ball, it tends to be accurate. Um, I do think still his best position for me is in the number nine. I, I, I've said that, but he recently he has been playing on the wing and doing really well, so I have to give him credit. And I think when it comes to the United game and the Burnley game, I think he was missed massively. Just that quality in the final third that was really lacking. Just not not just the ability um, to finish off chances, but to create good quality chances, to have that interplay in and around the penalty area, which Son has, which I've criticised Son in the past of um, lacking. It's something that he's really built on this season. And maybe being given the captain's armband, he's just assumed that responsibility of more of a team player rather than just being focusing on, you know, I've got to get a good, sh good shot off and get, get in a goal scoring position. It feels like he's really added that team play to his game. And that's definitely something. What I would say is against Man City, I don't know if he would have made a massive difference because we just couldn't get the ball to the front line. And I don't know if him being there changes that because I just think we lacked some any sort of... We couldn't keep the ball and we lacked any sort of supply to the front three. So I don't know if him playing in that game instead of a Werner or a Johnson or a Charleston would have made that much of a difference. It might have may mean maybe one chance more created or or, that, or something like that, but I don't think it means we won the game or anything like that. So I wouldn't say... On the weekend, that was a bit, that was much evidence of us missing him particularly. But I would say against Burnley and Man United, definitely. And I think our attacking play just hasn't been anywhere near as incisive um, with since he's come out of the team, and that's been a bit of a worry. Hopefully, he comes back soon. We know they're playing tomorrow against um, Saudi Arabia, so we'll see if he gets through that round. Maybe um, if they don't, he'll be back in time for Everton. Um, obviously, he definitely is missing the Brentford game. Um, but in terms of our front line overall, I, I think, look, I think in terms of numbers, they're not doing that bad. Like Richarlison's on seven goals, three assists. Um, Kulisevsky's on five goals, two assists. Johnson, one goal and four assists. I mean, he could be doing a bit better um, in that one. Um, obviously, Sun is definitely carrying the can with 12 goals and five assists. But as well, you're miss we've been missing Madison for a long time, who's giving us numbers, you know, three goals and six assists. So I think our front line definitely needs upgrading. I wouldn't say it's in... Like, I wouldn't say when everyone's fit that it's that bad. I, w I would say... I, would say, I think it's still pretty strong. Um, I would say it definitely compares to some of the better teams in terms of quality and depth, especially when everyone's fit. But when we're missing Son, um, you, when you do when you do take Son out of that front line, you when you look at what you look at what's left, it definitely does la lack a bit of quality. I have to say that. Um, I think it, it they're good like individually they're good but when you're looking at a cohesive front three and you're looking at keys of front three without with, with Son not there. You're looking who's going to create the chances, who's going to... But then I think if we if we had had Madison over the last couple of games, even without Son, I think maybe, we'd, maybe it would have been different. Maybe we would have, would have had that incisiveness. Because, you know, when Lo Celso's been stepping up, he's looked quite good and we have been able to create chances. But again, that's in general when Son's been there. So I don't know. I feel like when, you, when you're missing Son and Madison... Maybe it's more more of a case with them together. But if you if you've got one of them there, maybe it's less of an issue. Go on, David. You know what? Just quickly, I hear the point about Madison coming back, but you know he, he'll provide numbers for himself and and probably Richardson. It still doesn't make up for the fact that Brennan Johnson can't control a ball, link up play, you know, or, or or cross a ball. It still doesn't make up for the fact that Werner's a makeshift winger because he couldn't score goals up front, and he again he can't cross a ball. He doesn't have that link up play and stuff like that. So it does still doesn't solve that issue. You know, the whole the, the whole thing is. You're supposed to have different pieces of the puzzle. So you should have a Madison, you should have a Son, and you should have others. You can't just be reliant on... And this is the problem at Tottenham Hotspur. Down the years, we've been so very reliant on just a couple of players to dig us out of the hole every single week. We need to move on from that sort of thinking, and we need to have more options available to us and stop carrying players. They're not good enough. 
get them out. You know, I'm bringing the next guys uh, uh, that will that 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 will be good enough. It, the front three scoring goals and assisting goals, the hardest thing to do in football. Um, I, I think we take it for granted. We did with Harry Kane. Look, look at the clamour of people that were very okay to let him go without wanting so much as a as a massive replacement. And now we're all sitting here talking about the creativity. It's been an issue all season. The reason why I campaigned to move Son out to the left hand side in the first place is because we weren't creating opportunities before that as well. So. It, it just needs to be upgraded. We, it, it's that simple. You know, we've we had the opportunity. We bought Brennan Johnson. Hasn't worked out. We had the opportunity to go again in January. We, we we took a chance on on bringing Timo Werner here in in on loan with an option to buy if he comes good. Well, we're paying the price for it. Well, t- 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 you know, we have to take the lessons and, and go and address it properly this summer. Yeah, but the reason we were so dependent on players, well, like the re- the way you move on from being so dependent on players is there's one of two ways. Obviously, you can do it by just signing a bunch of new attackers and having more depth, which I think we, you know, our depth is not too bad, but obviously I'd like a bit more quality in a perfect world. But the way we've been doing it is developing an attacking system, which cr- the system creates chances rather than, you know, relying on individuals to do it like we were last season when, you know, playing very defensive, just get the ball to Kane and he, he can be a bit of magic. So... I think we are trying to do that. And I think, you know, in terms of have we missed Kane's goals, you can argue that, but I think we've probably scored more goals this season um, without Kane or maybe similar amount than with Kane last season. So are you, there's evidence there where we have, you know, moved on from it and we have replaced his goals. But we, Look, we, need to, we need to sign players, though, in the image of Ange Postacoglu. What does he want from his wingers to get really wide, be one-on-one demons, get the ball in the box um, for the cutbacks and everything? And I think Richarlison can be there to finish them. I mean, I know for the first half of the season, you know, he was couldn't hit a barn door or everything. But since the surgery, he's been putting the ball in the back of the net. The problem for me at the moment is the wide players. They're just not the way Ange Postacoglu wants to play. And if they can be coached into that way, in my uh, in my belief, like Brennan Johnson, he's still young, can be molded. But in my opinion, that those three positions, son aside, are the positions that we need to focus on in on the summer. I don't think it's going to come in January, though. I, I agree, and I just want to make this point. I know it was one game, but and it's a massive if that game against Aston Villa, no Madison. Right, we lost that game, but the way we created without the wing players for 20 I, minutes, for 20 minutes, I hear you, but I was like, I was blown away in my opinion. I thought if we can create that from midfield, do you know what I mean? With a Madison in, in that midfield and a Benton core in that midfield, and possibly a Basuma or Saar, like we were all having arguments of what midfields we should play. Surely we can create enough from that area to cause teams headaches and problems. And I do understand the system is out wide, get it to the wingers, 1v1. We don't have that at the moment. And that's what you're saying, like, son, like, I'm I'm in that same camp. I want a winger that can beat his man. I want a winger that can go on the outside and the inside, can cut back, that can cross, that can shoot, that has IQ, press resistant, that can carry X, Y, Z, da, 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 da. But I'm looking at our strengths and I'm like, wow, the creativity hub even in terms of our fullbacks, when you look at your doggy, your doggy does the underlapping runs, but he's that man. When he's ready, he does the cutback. Poro, he can come out wide. When he goes out wide, that final ball is mustard, quality. Yeah. Hey, so it's not like we haven't got any creativity. And we're not just relying on the wingers to be 10 out of 10. I think within that system, we can create. And I just feel like this one game in isolation has also made the fan base super high prep. Do you know what I'm saying? It's, it's not It's not just one game in isolation. Look, the system is working in terms it gets you up until around the edge of the box. But the reality is we're always coming back looking for Poro or one of the midfielders to do something. The system will get you into the final turn around the edge of the box, but that's where you need your attacking players. They're attackers for a reason because they have that final pass. pass. They have that sort of end product. How many games have we been camped in around the edge of the box making five-yard passes around? And the reason why that's happening is because any time the ball goes out wide, their job is to go and create, and they're not doing it. The system is working fine, but you have to have the right players in the right positions in that system to execute it. And unfortunately, up front, we do not right now. And it's been a problem all season long. The system, the midfields, the defenders, they do their job. They're progressing the ball. But whenever it goes out wide, it's been a massive problem all season. The problem before Sonny went out wide was no one was crossing the ball. 
But the reason why they weren't crossing the ball is because they can't. They didn't want to be exposed. So the system was working. It, it, it all comes down to the caliber of player. I think it depends. But we, we're third. We're third in the league for goals scored. You know what I mean? We are. We are scoring goals. It's not like, it's not like we're massively struggling to score. Yeah. Well, look. Let, let, let's not forget that the Premier League have made a big clamour towards bringing more goals into the game in terms of the penalties, giving the strikers the benefit of the doubt, and stuff like that as well. They've We've only had one penalty there. this season, though. Yeah. Okay. That's fair enough. But you know, we're still sitting fifth right now. We need more goals. That, that's the reality of it. I, I, just, yeah. I just think it depends on literally every game's different. Like some games where teams low blocked us, that's when we were passing it outside the box and all those short little passes. And I'm like, no, that's when you need to be quick and incisive and we need to speed things up, if that makes sense. But I felt like we were still learning the Ange ball at the time. And I still think we're going through that process. I still mm -hmm. think we're learning it. We're not completely there yet. And even in terms of getting rid of players, I didn't expect Ange to get rid of all the players in two windows. I thought yeah, he mm. might we might need a few windows to do it. You know what I'm saying? And we might not get all the players we want in two windows. I thought maybe next summer. He did say, like, judge me in my second year, not my first year. So me, I'm, I'm, I'm like, you know what? Not every game's going to be perfect and... Like, as fans, we do this, we critique, and that's what we're meant to do, you know, because we love the club. This is our club. I, I'm still like, give this brother time. And I'm not saying anyone on the panel is saying they're not giving him time. I'm not saying that. I'm just talking generally. Do you know what I mean? I think yeah, it yeah. will get better. I think we're all upset because it's been 16 years in a cup and it's been the same. And the bad performances have come in the cup as well and it does look slightly worrying like I, I agree like i do agree like when it comes to that final third i said at the start it's just not clicking well i guess that's that's the great thing about it right because we're all in agreement that it's not exactly clicking too well and postacoglu six months in we're third in goals scored in the premier league and it's not clicking so imagine once we get these players in in the summer if we can get these players in how much it will click and how many goals will bloody score then i mean that just proves we're on to a good thing right here at tottenham hotspur with Ange postacoglu but we got something to talk 